I think this watch can just be summed up as just being pure class. Welcome back to Bark and Jack. I am Adrian, and this channel is just about drinking coffee, talking watches. This is uh, like a, an espresso mug. It's, I don't just have big hands. Today, we are checking out the Breitling Premier B09. This watch has been lent to me by Breitling. They have no say on the video. They have no preview of what is gonna be said about the watch. I have no contract with them, and they are not paying me to do this to prove that point. If you wanna join me in drinking some kick-ass coffee is grown in Nicaragua, roasted in California, and it's free shipping throughout the whole of the US. I haven't really covered Breitling uh, on this channel very much for one big reason, and that is they're a brand that I was really passionate about as a kid, because uh, I'm an RAF kid, a military kid. I was obsessed with aviation, and I grew up reading RAF magazines, and there would always be adverts from Breitling. So they became this aspirational brand. So I always looked up to them, but then I grew up, they kind of changed direction. They became this shopping mall fashion kind of brand, similar to Tag Heuer, which is a real shame because they have such a rich history. And that's what I love about this watch. This watch is an extension of the original Premier range that was launched in the 40s, in 1943. Let's talk about the specs briefly. So we've got a 40 millimeter wide case that is just over 13 millimeters thick. Despite the fact it doesn't have screw down pushes and it doesn't have a screw down crown, it does have 100 meters of water resistance. Just don't obviously use the crown on pushes if you do take it underwater. I can't imagine anyone needs to take this underwater, but that's nice peace of mind that you have. The glass is sapphire crystal and it has, unfortunately, anti-reflective coating on both the top and the underside of the crystal. I say unfortunately because you can scratch and reflective coating off, so it's a shame that it's on the top side. This dial is pistachio green. We have the running seconds over at the nine o'clock sub dial. We have the center seconds as the chronograph seconds, and then we have the 30 minute counter at the three o'clock sub dial. We've got syringe hands, applied numerals, and applied logo. And I love the logo and the numerals. There's a lot that I love about this. The case is, I'm gonna say it's chunky. You feel the case there, but it's not overly thick. It has presence, you notice it, it's there, but it's not like a dive watch where it stands tall, it sits tall in your wrist. You will still be able to slide this under a cuff. And this is far thinner than a lot of chronographs within the same price range. I'm thinking IWC, where they have very thick cases. What I'm trying to say is that this case is pleasantly thick. It could have been thinner if they reduced the water resistance and if they didn't have a sapphire crystal case back, but you want to see the movement on this thing. This is the in-house Breitling Caliber B09. It's a hand-wound 4 Hertz COSC certified column wheel vertical clutch chronograph with 70 hours of power reserve. If you're unsure of whether a watch is, whether a chronograph is uh, a column wheel chronograph or whether it's a cam actuated chronograph, just flip over and you'll be able to see this kind of castle turret looking thing uh, that is the column wheel. Column wheel chronographs are harder to manufacture compared to cam actuated chronographs uh, and so therefore it's kind of deemed to be a higher end chronograph uh, but the actual benefits are the fact that the operation is more smooth but also from a slightly less important side uh, the operation is just more pleasing to use. You get a, a very obvious very mechanical clunk when you engage a column wheel chronograph. When it comes to the movement from afar it looks gorgeous. Very similar to my thoughts on the movement on my Omega Seamaster. The, the finishing on the Seamaster movement is pretty much the same standard as what you get here. It's a good looking movement at a glance, but as soon as you get close up to it, you start to see the imperfections. You start to see the machine marks within the movement. And that's exactly what you have here. It's a good looking movement to the point of we have interesting finishes going on, but it's not a highly finished movement. And that isn't a criticism. Exactly the same as what I said about my Omega. I'd prefer to buy a watch that has performance as opposed to having high finishing. High finishing is, it, it highlights a level of craftsmanship, but there's a big cost to that. But when it comes to actually using a watch or looking at a watch for what it is, a timekeeping device, the finishing doesn't add much to it. There are elements within the movement where a higher finishing results in better efficiency, but as an overall thing for aesthetics, it's nice to look at, but the reality is I, I rarely look at it. So I'd much prefer to have a higher performing movement than a highly finished movement, especially at 6,000 pounds. I think this movement is finished to a decent standard for the price within Switzerland, let's say. It's, uh, if you go to Japan, 
at this price, it's, it's hard to beat Grand Seiko for value and finishing. As I've shown you my Seamaster, it'd be rude for me not to introduce the new strap that we have. I know I launched a strap last week along with the watch roll. I wanted to launch a watch roll. The wife wanted to launch the new blue NATO strap. And so marriage is all about uh, compromise. And so the compromise was we launched the watch roll and one of the colored NATO straps. But now the problem is I now look silly because I'm now launching another NATO strap having launched a NATO strap last week. I still think my plan of launching a watch roll and then the two NATO straps together makes more sense, especially as we have, especially, especially as we have a promotion where if you buy one NATO strap, you get 10% off the second NATO straps. It just makes sense to launch two bloody straps together. I'm gonna get in trouble anyway. She watches these videos. You don't need a discount code to get the 10% off the second strap. It just happens automatically at uh, checkouts. So jump over to barkandjack.com and check out all the bits that we have over there. Straps, rolls, and coffee. I haven't really been following Breitling as a whole. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brand that I've kind of just looked at from afar and just made snap judgments based on the branding, based on just initial impressions, as opposed to delving in deep and looking at what they're actually doing. This watch, for me, as an outsider of the brand, I feel like it's a bit of a commercial kind of pushing up of the brand. This is £6,200, which is a sizable chunk of money. And no doubt a lot of people are going to be comparing it to Tudor, who use a similar movement. The Breitling is known for their chronographs and Tudor is using uh, a Breitling movement. So no doubt people are going to make a comparison between the two of them, despite the fact that I, I feel like these two products are really very, very different products. They, they appeal to different markets, but I do think people are gonna make the comparison, especially at the fact that the Tudor version is nearly half the price of the Breitling. But the Breitling is a far more refined product than what's in Tudor. It's gonna be finished to a far higher standard. The moon itself is finished to a far higher standard than the Breitling. Now, I'm not criticizing either. I think they're both great. And in all honesty, the Tudor is probably the one that I would personally get for myself. The Breitling, stunning as it is, it's not my kind of watch. Actually, I wouldn't buy a chronograph. I don't need a chronograph, so I wouldn't buy either. But regardless, I feel like these products, although they do have something that joins them together, being the Breitling development of the movement, I do feel like they're very different products and they're worthy of the difference in pricing. I have been trying to think of some negative points around this watch because I appreciate this is a very positive look on a watch. This is a very positive message about something. So I, I, I do want to kind of balance it out with something that stands out as concerns. The problem is I, I can easily counter those. The two concerns that stand out is one, green isn't all that versatile but the world has changed and I don't need a versatile watch and I'm sure a lot of other people who work from home don't necessarily need a versatile watch. So I think the biggest thing around this watch or the biggest challenge around this watch is gonna be value retention, which is for some people that's a big thing, for other people that's not a big thing. That's just something that you're gonna to need to be aware of. I think the reality is it's just hard to fault this watch. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's, that's neither here nor there. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this watch and what are your thoughts on Breitling. Do you feel Breitling has turned a corner with their offering? You might have been thinking, what's all this rubbish on the side of my desk? This is a case from a Rolex Submarine and a little bit of bracelet as well. This is the result of what I got up to yesterday. If you want to see a fake Rolex Submariner being destroyed, then hit subscribe. The next video is fun. <laughs> I had fun, at least, making it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon when you subscribe so you get notifications when the next video does drop. If you want to check out watch traps, watch accessories and coffee, jump over to barkandjack.com and give me a follow on Instagram at barkandjack. And if you're on Reddit, I've, I've created a Reddit page. I didn't actually create it, someone else created it and we're working on it together and I will be doing a Q&A from the Reddit page. It's uh, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash barkandjack. Jump over to Reddit and, and see what's going on. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.